to Virginia Museum of Fine Arts, Creative Connection, Sky Colors. This video is brought to you by Early Childhood Education. We are excited to be sharing with you. In our lesson, we will sing songs, read stories, create art, and look closely at a work of art from VMFA's collection. Get ready to follow along with each teacher and feel free to pause and continue the video as it suits your family or classroom. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to email us at earlychildhood at vmfa.museum. Enjoy! Hello friends, and welcome to another VMFA Early Childhood Creative Connection. We're gonna be talking about something that you can see outside and something that you can see every day. So while you're thinking about what that might be, we're gonna start by singing our welcome song. So can everyone put their hands up and wiggle your fingers? And I hope that if you know our song, you'll sing along. Okay, are you ready? Welcome everybody, let's wave hello. Let's touch our nose and wiggle our toes. Welcome everybody, let's pinch our cheeks and smack our knees and stomp our feet. Welcome everybody, let's wiggle our ears and blink our eyes and clap our hands. Welcome everybody, let's start our class. All right, thanks for singing with me and welcome everyone. The name of our creative connection is Sky Colors. So we're gonna be talking about the sky and we're gonna be talking about colors. So I thought I'd start by asking you, what color is the sky? I'm hearing a lot of people say that the sky is blue. And you're right, on a bright day, the sky can look really blue. Now my sky is just white right now. So I think we should add some blue to it to give it some color, okay? So let's give it some blue. And on a bright day when the sky is really blue, What's shining in the sky? That's right, the sun. So let's add a sun to our sky. All right, it's already starting to look better. Now, I also wanted to ask, is the sky always blue? I hear a lot of people saying, no, it's not. And you're right, the sky is always changing and it can be lots of different colors. And it depends on the time of day or what the weather is like. So if you've ever seen the sky early in the morning when the sun is rising or late in the evening when the sun is setting, maybe you've seen it in real life or maybe you've seen pictures. But if you have, what colors did you notice in the sky? I'm hearing people say pinks and purples. That's right. And oranges and even yellows. Yeah, it can be really colorful when the sun is rising or setting. So let's add some of those colors to our sky and you can name the colors as I add them to my board. So we have purple, that's right. Some of you are saying pinks. So I've got some dark pink and some light pinks, good. And a lot of you were mentioning orange. And yellow, that's right. So now we have some more colors besides blue in my sky. What do you think? It looks nice with a lot of colors, doesn't it? It's really colorful. But sometimes it rains outside. So what color is the sky on a rainy day? That's right, it's kind of dark and gray. And I hear some people saying, and there are a lot of clouds in the sky. You're right, because the rain falls from the clouds. But sometimes 
on certain days, we see something really colorful in the sky when the rain is beginning to end and the sun is coming back out. Do you know what that is? That's right, a rainbow. Rainbows really make the sky colorful, don't they? And we don't see rainbows every day. So when you see a rainbow, it's pretty special, isn't it? Yeah. But what about nighttime? What does the sky look like at night? I'm hearing people say that it's really dark and that it's black. And you're right, that is a good way to describe the color of the sky at night. But there are some things that light up in the black sky. That's right, I'm hearing people say stars and the moon. But I want you to look at this sky and remember that the sky can have lots and lots of colors. So the next time that you're drawing a sky or painting a picture of the sky, think about all of these other colors because your sky doesn't always just have to be blue, right? Right. Okay, so since we're talking about the sky and colors, I thought we could play a game of hide and seek. So this son is a really good hider. He's pretty sneaky and he is going to hide behind some clouds. And I hope you will help me find him. Can you do that? All right, great. So I'm going to take him off the board and I have some colorful clouds. I'm going to put him behind one of my clouds. And as I put the clouds in the sky, as I add them, you can also help me say the color. Okay. So I have a red cloud. Good job. An orange cloud. I have a, that's right, green cloud. Good job. I have a blue cloud. And my last cloud is, let's get it ready. That's right, purple. Good job. So, the sun is hiding behind one of these colorful clouds. Can you imagine if clouds really were all of these colors, how cool the sky would look? Clouds are pretty cool already though because they're always changing shape. Sometimes they're big and fluffy. Sometimes they're moving across the sky really slowly. Sometimes so slow it doesn't look like they're even moving at all. And sometimes the wind is really blowing them across the sky. And it's also really fun to use your imagination when you look at clouds. Sometimes the shapes of clouds might remind you of animals or people or other things. So it can be really fun to just lay on a blanket and, and watch the clouds for a little while and see what comes into your mind. But our clouds, remember, have a sun hiding behind one of them. So let's see if we can find that sneaky sun, okay? So what color cloud do you think we should look behind first? I'm hearing a lot of people say orange, orange. So let's check behind the orange cloud. Now, before I see if there's anything behind the orange cloud, I'm gonna teach you a little song that we're gonna sing together, okay? And my song goes like this. Little sun, little sun, playing hide and seek. Are you behind the orange cloud? Let's take a peek. Okay, do you think you can sing it with me? All right, let's sing it together. Ready? Little sun, little sun, playing hide and seek. Are you behind the orange cloud? Let's take a peek. All right, let's see if you're right. Mr. Sun, are you behind the orange cloud? It's not the sun, but we did find a bird flying in the sky. And what color is the bird? That's right, it's a black bird. This is a special kind of black bird because you can see on its wing, it has really bright red and yellow feathers. And this is called a red-winged blackbird. And this is one of my favorite birds. I've been seeing this bird a lot lately down near the river, not too far from my house. And it's really pretty. The colors are really bright and it looks really nice. So maybe you'll spy a red-winged blackbird when you're out on a nature walk. 
All right, but that bird is not the sun, so we've got to keep looking. So what color do you think we should check next? I'm hearing people say the purple cloud. So let's check the purple cloud. Are you ready? Okay, we're gonna sing our song and this time we're gonna say the color purple. Ready? Little sun, little sun, playing hide and seek. Are you behind the purple cloud? Let's take a peek. All right, let's see. Is the sun back here? No, it's not the sun, but we did find, that's right, a kite. It's really fun to fly a kite in the sky, especially on a windy day, but it's not the sun. So we've got to keep looking. What color should we check next? I'm hearing red, red. So let's see if the sun is behind the red cloud. Are you ready? Okay, let's sing our song together. Little sun, little sun, playing hide and seek. Are you behind the red cloud? Let's take a peek. All right, let's see, what do we have? Sun, are you there? Oh no, it's not the sun, is it? We found lightning and rain it's a storm oh no we better keep looking so we have two clouds left green and blue which one should we pick i heard green green okay let's see what's behind the green cloud so let's sing our song little sun little sun playing hide and seek are you behind the green cloud? Let's see. Let's take a peek. All right. Is it going to be there? I told you the sun is really sneaky. It's not the sun, but we did find a colorful rainbow. All right. There's one cloud left. What color is it? Blue. That's right. Do you think the sun is there? I have a feeling it might be. Let's find out. Okay, let's sing our song one last time. Little sun, little sun, playing hide and seek. Are you behind the blue cloud? Let's take a peek. All right, ready to see what's back here? Ta-da! You found him! There he is. He was hiding behind the blue cloud. He was pretty sneaky, wasn't he? All right, so thank you for helping me play hide and seek with our sun. And again, remember, there are so many colors that you can see in the sky, not just blue. So remember that when you're doing an art project the next time, okay, that has the sky in it. So we're going to keep talking about the sky and the colors that you can see in the sky. And next, Miss Ariel has a story to share with you about the sky. So I hope you enjoy listening to her story and I'll see you again soon. Bye friends. Hello VMFA friends, Miss Ariel here for our Creative Connections class. Today's class is all about sky colors. So we're gonna read the book, Sky Colors. Now, before we get started, I wanted you to think about the sky. I thought it was a beautiful day to read this book because if you look behind me, you can see that the sky is what color? Yes, it's blue. And it also has lots of what in the sky? Yes, clouds, white wispy clouds through the sky. Now, sometimes the sky isn't at blue. At night, sometimes it's black with stars. And in the morning when the sun's coming up, you might see a rainbow of colors. And that's what our book is about. It's about figuring out what the right color is for the sky. So before we get started, let's first put on our thinking caps together. Zoop. Let's click on our listening ears. Click, 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 click. And let's sip our lips and put the key in our pocket. So this is called Sky Colors by Peter H. Reynolds. And see, we have an artist on the front cover. Marisol was an artist. She loved to draw and paint, and she even had her very own art gallery. Do you have an art gallery too on your refrigerator at home? I know my kids do. See the little kitty cat? 
Not all of her art hung in a gallery. Much of it she shared with the world. She painted posters to share ideas she believed in. At school, Marisol was famous for her creative clothes, her box of art supplies, and her belief that everybody was an artist. Yes, Marisol was an artist through and through. So when her teacher told the class that they were going to paint a mural for the library, Marisol couldn't wait to begin. See, she's in class with her friends. The classroom buzzed with the sound of brainstorming. The students talked and sketched. Together, they made a great big drawing along here. They marched to the library. I'll paint a fish. I'll paint one too. I'll paint the ocean. Maricel shouted, I'll paint the sky. Marisol rummaged through the box of paint, but she could not find any blue. Uh-oh, how am I going to make the sky without blue paint? Uh-oh, what do you think she's going to do? I don't know, let's see. The bell rang. It was time to put their brushes down for the day. As she climbed aboard the bus, Marisol kept wondering. All the way home, she stared out the window. There she is, looking out the window. What color is the sky right now? Yeah, it's yellow. The sun lowered closer to the horizon. Wow, what colors do you see now? Yes, red and orange and yellow, and there's the bus. Later at home, Marisol watched day turn into night. See, it's getting darker. There's pinks and burgundies and purples and yellows. That night, Marisol settled into a deep dream. And now what color is the sky? Because it's nighttime. Yes, it's black. She drifted through a sky swirling with colors. The colors mixed, making too many to count. Wow, look at all those beautiful colors. In the morning, Marisol stood waiting for the bus in the rain. The sky was not blue. She smiled. She's got an idea, I think. At school, Marisol raced to the library. She grabbed a dish and began adding colors. This one, that one, she swirled the brush to make an all together new color. See with her green paints and her pink paints. What color do you think she's making? Marisol then began painting on the wall. A boy asked, what color is that? That. Marisol said, that is sky color. Oh, I can't wait to see. See how she made sky color with so many different colors? The ones from her dreams. Do you see the green right there? And the yellows and the oranges and the reds and the pinks and the purple and all the fish they talked about drawing and even stars in the sky. Well, I hope you enjoyed our book and I hope you enjoy doing the art projects we've created for you. Have a great day. Hello friends, Miss Kareem here and I wanted to share a really fun song with you today. The song is called Mr. Sun. Have you heard of this song before? Yes, I know I have. It's a really fun song to sing, especially when the, the sun is out. And um, I know the sun is out here today and I'm enjoying it. So I have some hand motions to go with the song and then I'm gonna play the song on my guitar. Would you like to learn the hand motions? Wonderful. All right, let's get started. So first we're gonna go put our hands up in the air and above our head like the shape of the sun and we'll sway back and forth. 
So it goes, Mr. Sun, Sun, Mr. Golden Sun, please shine down on me. So you put your hands up in the air and then sprinkle them down like the sun, the sun is shining down and then point to yourself, okay? And then it goes back up, Mr. Sun, Sun, Mr. Golden Sun. Then you put your hands over your face and sing, hiding behind a tree. And you can go peekaboo. And then, these little children are asking you to please come out so we can play with you. Oh, Mr. Sun, Sun, Mr. Golden Sun, please shine down on me. And that is the whole song. Are you ready to do the hand motions and sing along with me? Wonderful. Okay. You ready? Wonderful. Mr. Sun, Sun, Mr. Golden Sun, please shine down on me. Mr. Sun, Sun, Mr. Golden Sun, hiding behind a tree. Peek-a-boo, these little children are asking you. Please come out so we can play with you. Mr. Sun, Sun, Mr. Golden Sun, please shine. You want to do it one more time and then we'll kind of do a little la di -ga at the end? Okay, let's do it together. Mr. Sun, Sun, Mr. Golden Sun, please shine down on me. Mr. Sun, Sun, Mr. Golden Sun, hiding behind a tree. Peek-a-boo, these little children are asking you, please come out so we can so much for joining me in this song today and feel free to sing it whenever you want or replay the song to get the hand motions down. All right, I hope you enjoy the rest of the class. Bye friends. See you next time. Today we are learning a lap bounce about the most colorful thing you can see up in the sky, a rainbow. Now this is a nice short and simple song about rainbows and it's gonna to be to the tune of I'm a Little Teapot. So to get ready to do your lap bounce, if you have a young infant, it's best if they lie down in your lap like this where it's nice and secure. But if your infant's a little older and they can hold their head up well and correct their head position, then they can sit up in your lap like this. Now, if your child's a little bit older and maybe too big to bounce around like this, you can try sitting in a chair and doing a bounce on the knee. It might also be more comfortable for you if you're leaning up against a couch or up against a wall. So always make sure that you're comfortable and use common sense when doing a lap bounce. Okay, so here's a great big rainbow to the tune of I'm a Little Teapot. And at the end, I'm going to say the word pop, and that's when you can kind of do a big bounce or pick your infant up, okay? There's a great big rainbow in the sky with pretty colors way up high. When it starts to rain and the sun comes out, great big rainbow will pop out. Yay! Hello everyone. I'm going to share my favorite way to make process art. But before I do, I wanted to take a minute to look at the book Sky Color by Peter Reynolds. Now, if you haven't read this story before, it's about a girl named Marisol, and she has to paint a picture of the sky. But Marisol has a problem because she doesn't have any blue paint. 
So she's trying to figure out what to do. So one night, Marisol has an amazing dream. I want to show you the picture of what her dream looks like. So Marisol dreams that she's floating in the air. She's up in the sky and you can see there's lots of colors in the sky. There's a little teeny bit of blue. You might spy that, but you might also notice all of the other colors. That's right. There's pinks and purples and orange and yellow and even some green. So you can see that the colors are swirling all around her and they're mixing together. So I hope that this picture of the sky in Marisol's dream will inspire you while you make your own sky prints. Now I'm not gonna tell you how the story ends. She'll have to read it to find out if she's able to solve her problem or not. So I have an example of a sky print that I made and you can see how my colors are swirling together like the colors in the sky in Marisol's dream. But remember, this is my art. Does your art have to look like mine? No, that's right. We're all different, so our art will look different too. And there's no wrong or right way to do this project. So this is just one way that your sky print could look. All right? So to make your sky print, you're going to need some paper. I'm using a thicker paper, something like cardstock or watercolor paper will work well. But if you don't have this, you can use a thinner paper that you have around your house too. You're also going to need some shaving cream and you'll need a container to put your shaving cream in. I'm just using an old baking sheet, but you can use any container you have. The um, thing to think about is you have to make sure that your paper fits inside your container. So you can cut your paper to a smaller size if your container is smaller, or you can cut your paper in half and make two prints. Whatever you have at home will work. You'll also need some color. So we're gonna use paint. I have some liquid watercolor paint. If you have this, you can use it. But if you don't, you can just use food color. That'll work too. And then you need something to help you drip your paint. You could just use a paintbrush to drip paint. If you have um, a dropper at home, you could use a dropper to drop your paint, or you could even just use a spoon, anything that you can use to drip paint. And then a couple other things, you'll need a piece of cardboard or just something with a straight edge. You could also use a ruler. And then you might wanna have some of these tools, a craft stick, a fork, or a chopstick. So these are some things that you can have if you wanna try those out also. All right, so let's get started making our sky print. So the first thing you're gonna do is grab your shaving cream and you're gonna spray a layer of shaving cream in your container. I'm gonna make mine about an inch deep. So I'm gonna spray it on. Spraying the shaving cream is pretty fun. Make sure I get it all over. And you don't have to fill it in all the way. Once you have a good amount like that, right now it kind of looks like a big puffy cloud, doesn't it? But I wanna remind you, remember that this is shaving cream. It's not whipped cream. So do you wanna taste this? Would you wanna take your finger and, and give it a taste? No, it wouldn't taste very good. So remember, this is shaving cream. And then I'm going to take my piece of cardboard or your ruler, and I'm going to smooth my puffy cloud out a little bit. So I'm gonna go back and forth, just kind of smoothing it out. This will make your print turn out a little bit better because more of your paper will be able to have contact with the shaving cream. So you wanna just take a minute to smooth it out the best you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so now we're ready to add some color. It's kind of like we're painting our cloud. So I think I'll start with my brush to show you how you can do that. Now you can use all the colors. You can just pick a few colors if you want. I have a couple examples. This is one I made with just the cool colors. So it has blue and green and purple. Or I made one with mostly warm colors. I did add some purple to it and pink and orange and yellow. So there's lots of ways you can mix your colors or you can do all of the colors. That's what I'm gonna do. 
I think I'm going to do a rainbow sky. So I'm going to start with my brush and I'm going to dip it in the pink and I'm just going to kind of give it a little shake. And you can see that as I shake it, the pink is dripping onto the shaving cream. And you can put the colors anywhere you want them to go. And if your paintbrush touches the shaving cream, that's okay. So you could just kind of dot it on like that. Now, if you want to clean your brush in between colors, you can just get a cup of water and give it a little swirl. You can see it's turning my water pink before you go to your next color. So I think I'll do orange next. And I'm gonna drip some orange. And this can, you can put your color anywhere you want it to go. Like I said, there's no wrong or right way to drip your color. All right, I think I'll add some yellow next. And you can put as much or as little color as you like. What's really cool about this project is that although we are I'm talking about the early childhood age. This is fun for older kids and even adults. And guess what? No two prints turn out alike. So you can make as many prints as you want and they'll all look different. All right, I'm going to do a little bit with my dropper so you can see how to do that. I'm going to give it a squeeze and put it in my green paint and then let go and you can see it has sucked up green. So I'm going to give it, some, give it a gentle squeeze and add some green. And then I'm going to give a little bit of a squeeze in the water to clean it out before I get some blue paint. All right, here's how my shaving cream looks. I'm going to add some blue. It's getting really colorful now, isn't it? All right, and I've got some purple, so I'll go ahead and just add one last color. All right, let's put some purple. a little bit more and then I think I have enough color and it's really up to you how much color you want to add to your sky all right I think I'm gonna stop there and you can see what it looks like so now I'm going to swirl the colors around so think about the way those colors were swirling in Marisol's dream in the sky so you can use lots of things to swirl your colors I think I'm gonna start just with my paintbrush. So I'll lift it up so you can see. And you can take your paintbrush, you could just do lines up and down, back and forth. You can see that's already mixing the color some. And then maybe I go this direction and mix it. They're starting to swirl, but maybe I want them to really swirl and I can make some circles and loops. Just gonna loop my brush around and around and swirl it all around. You can see the colors are really starting to mix and swirl. And it's up to you how much you want your colors to mix together. All right, I think that is looking pretty good. I think I will go ahead and stop there. This is really fun. Like I said, it feels like you're painting a fluffy cloud. All right, so I hope you can see the colors, the way they have swirled together. And now we're gonna make our print. All right, so I'm going to take my piece of paper and I'm going to carefully lay it on top of my painted cloud, my shaving cream. I'm gonna give it a little gentle push because you wanna make sure that your paper is touching the shaving cream all over. You might notice some shaving cream kind of squirting out of the sides of your paper. That way you know that it goes all the way to the edge. All right, I'm gonna give it a little rub. And are you ready to see what it looks like? Okay, I'm excited. I'm going to slowly lift it up. And right now you can see there's a lot of shaving cream on it. And it might not look like much, but under the shaving cream is a surprise. So let's see what we have under there. I'm gonna move this aside and I'm gonna use this piece of paper to help me scrape the shaving cream off. And I forgot to show you, I forgot to try out my fork, which remember you can also try a fork 
a chopstick or a craft stick and see what different patterns it makes in your shaving cream. All right, I'm gonna lay this on the table and I'm gonna use my scraper again and I'm going to carefully hold the top of my paper while I scrape off the shaving cream. And as you do, you'll see what is hidden underneath. Let's see what we have. I'm gonna turn it this way, and get the rest of the shaving cream off. All right, are you ready to see it? So underneath all of that, I have this. So look at the way the colors swirl all together. It really looks like the sky in Marisol's dream with the colors swirling and, and moving all around. So remember, this is just one way and you can keep making prints. You don't have to stop here because you can take your shaving cream that you already have. You could make another print from this. You could add some more colors and stir and mix those and make more prints. You could probably make, um, depending on how muddy your shaving cream gets, you could make three or four prints. And then if it starts to get a little too muddy and you want to start fresh, you can just take your shaving cream and just spray a new fresh layer on top of what you already have and add more color and keep going. You can make as many prints as you want. So you can either stop here and just uh, have your colorful sky, or if you wanna take it a step further, you could think about things that you could add to your sky. Maybe you want some clouds in your sky. You could add some maybe uh, puffy um, cotton balls for clouds. Maybe there's a bird. Maybe there's a person floating in your sky like in Marisol's dream. You could draw a picture of yourself and put it in your sky. Maybe you're a superhero or you have butterfly wings. So there's lots and lots of things you can do. But again, you can just stop at the first step and you can still have a really beautiful work of art. It's up to you. Um, I will mention for caregivers of children who are young or infants, um, if you have a concern about them putting the shaving cream in their mouth, you can use this homemade paint recipe that we use in our infant classes. And you can just let your child finger paint with this paint and enjoy mixing the colors with their fingers to make a colorful sky. Also, something really fun for infants, if you have an infant who can hold up his or her neck, and enjoys tummy time, you can put paint on a piece of paper and then put the paper in a Ziploc bag and then seal it with tape and then lay your infant on the floor on their tummy and then put this in front of your infant and just give your infant some time to look at the colors and manipulate the colors of the paint. I'm gonna move this out of the way. And then while they're on their tummy as they touch the paint and push it around, the colors will move and the colors will mix together. And then you can have a colorful sky print that way too. So there's lots of ways to make your colorful sky. But if you try the shaving cream, I hope that you'll enjoy it as much as I do. So thank you for joining me and I hope I get to see you again soon. Goodbye friends. Today we're going to be talking about an American landscape painter named George Ennis. Do you know what a landscape is? First, can you say that word with me? Landscape. Do you want to say it again? Landscape. Okay, so there's a clue. In the word landscape, you could actually pull out the word land. And that's a clue to what a landscape is. A landscape is a painting of land, a painting of the outdoors. So if you went outside, maybe in your backyard or in a park, and you looked around, what would you see? Say if you looked down at the ground, what would you see? Maybe dirt? Did anyone say rocks? Or soil? Or grass? Yes, and I know I see my flowers back here. 
You might see flowers. Now also, anything else that you might see? Did anyone say bushes or trees? Maybe a tree with the trunk going up, up, and the branches that went out. And that might actually lead us up to the sky. So if you look up at the sky, what do, do you see in the sky? You see any clouds? Did anyone say clouds? And what color is the sky? Maybe blue? What if it was storming? What color would the clouds be? Kind of gray and dark. And what if it was nighttime? What would the sky look like then? Oh, maybe we would see stars or the moon? That's right. So a landscape is a painting of the outdoors. And George Ennis also loved to paint people in his landscapes. He liked to portray how much he loved nature and other people's love for nature. And the painting that we are going to be looking at now is called Sunset. Let's take a look. Let's first take a moment to look at the painting titled Sunset by George Innes. Remember that this painting is a landscape. So I bet you're noticing natural objects on the ground and in the sky. What do you notice? Did anyone say trees? Do you see trees up close and also far away? And yes, I see people in the field and some animals. What kind of animals are they? They are sheep. You are right. So some of the animals are also far away, like the trees are. And then I see one of the sheep that's up close. Now nearby the sheep, do you notice anyone? Do you see the people in the painting? How many people are there? Let's count them. One, two, three. There are three people. I see that two of them are closer to the sheep. Do you see the taller person is holding the little person's hand? What is the child in blue looking at? Yes, it looks like she is, or he, is looking at the sheep. Do you notice anything about the people that is interesting? Now what about on the ground? I also see the grass in the field. And do you see any flowers? Do you notice those large rocks over by the trees? How many are there? Let's count those. One, two, three, and four. There are four. Now looking up at the sky, what do you notice about the sky? Do you see the sun? Where is the sun? What color is the sun? And what color is the sky? Right, it's not blue. There are pinks and oranges because remember, the sun is setting. It's going down for the day. Okay, what about the clouds? Are the clouds white or are they different colors? So if the sun is setting, what time of day is it? Is it morning time or is it time to eat lunch in the middle of the day? Or is it evening time at the end of the day? So we can tell from looking at the sun from where it's located in the painting and knowing the title 
of the painting is sunset, that it's the time when we would eat dinner and brush our teeth and get ready for bed. So we know that it's evening time. Do you notice anything else about the painting? Share it with the grown-up or the other people that are around you. Hello, my friends. I hope you enjoyed today's creative connection all about the sky. I hope you had fun reading the story and singing the songs and the lap bounce as well as the virtual gallery walk and the art project. I know I learned a lot and I hope you learned a lot too. So right now we're going to sing our goodbye song. Do you know our goodbye song? Awesome! Well if you haven't done our goodbye songs before, what we like to do is raise our hands and wiggle our fingers and wave our hands from side to side as we sing our song together. Are you ready? Awesome! Now it's time to say goodbye to our friends. Now it's time to say goodbye to our friends. Now it's time to say goodbye. Give a smile and a high five. Now it's time to say goodbye to our friends. Yay! Wonderful job, everybody. Well, thanks for joining us today, and we will see you next time. Goodbye!